someone calls out and says, Go back to your family and your homes quickly, for a Dajjal has appeared. That, O oh Muslims, the Dajjal has come in your lands. And the first of the Alamatul Kubra, the first of the major signs, is the advent of the Dajjal or the Antichrist. A Dajjal means the liar, the impersonator, one who lies about his impersonation, lies about who he represents. So he comes and says that he is Prophet Isa alayhi salam when he first comes out. So the Imam Al Mahdi will send 10 people, 10 riders, to go and investigate and scout, see if the news is correct. And the Rasul says, Salawatu Rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi. I know their names and I know the names of their fathers and I know the color of their horses. They will be the best riders of the day. So they will go and see, Ah, Hin, the calamity has come. The Dajjal has come. Who is this Dajjal? The first of the big signs of Qiyamah. And understand, when the signs, the major signs are unleashed, they will follow each other like beads on a necklace. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Al-ayat, ay alamat, قَرَزَاتٌ مَنْذُومَاتٌ فِي سِلْكٍ فَإِنْ يُقْتَعِ السِّلْكُ يَطْبَعُ بَعْضُهَا بَعْضًا The major signs are like beads on a necklace. When the necklace is cut, one will come after the other. So the Dajjal comes. Let's describe him. A Dajjal is a man. He's a man. He's a human being. The Prophet says, The Dajjal has one of his eyes obliterated, like as in wiped out. It is covered. ممسوح العين مكتوب بين عينيه كافر on his forehead is written كافر and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم separated it كافر يقرأه كل مؤمن every believer can read it whether he's literate or illiterate and one eye is wiped out as in it's covered the second eye is damaged and the word of the hadith says it has shrunk and it uses the same word that describes when grapes, you know, shrivel in the sun and become, you know, wrinkly and small. So the, one eye will be covered, the other eye will be like a worn out on old or wrinkly grape. It will be squeezed down. Between his forehead will be written kafir. The Prophet ﷺ described him, his hair will be curly, his legs will be arced, he walks a little different. He's stubby, strongly built, and his start or where he comes out from again will be from the area of Khorasan. So the Prophet described the people that will come with him, and he uses the word 70,000 of the Jews of Isfahan. And describing the faces, it resembles the area between Afghanistan and and Iran, some of the inhabitants there, the Prophet says they will have flat faces like the shield and their cheekbones will be raised and their faces will be meaty and they will be wearing cloaks around them. Do the mats! And his first time that he becomes evident will be in the land of the Arabs and he will travel, he will roam the earth and the hadith says not a village will be missed except he has gone to it and what kalam and subhanallah listen to the ahadith with regards to him the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam says listen there is no calamity on the face of this earth from the time of adam till qiyamah come greater than the calamity of the dajjal and there wasn't a prophet that came and accepted he came and warned his people about him and in another hadith, and Nuh warned his people about him. Nuh, very early in human history. At that time, Nuh warned his people about this calamity of the Dajjal. And the Prophet sallallahu says, All prophets warned their people about him. وَأَنَا آخِرُ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ And I am the last of the prophets. And you are the last of the nations. So he will come from you, there's no way about it. He will come amidst your time. La mahala. There is no exception. It will come in your time. And then he says, the rahmatul muhda, that if he comes, wa ana bayna adhurikum, and I am amidst you, then I will suffice him on your behalf. 
I will fight him on your behalf. If I am here and he comes, leave him to me. But if he comes and I'm not here, then I leave you to Allah and Allah Rabbul Izza will be your caretaker. And in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, from the time of Adam until Qiyamah, no Amr has come greater than that of the Dajjal. You know, Christians and Jews will be among the first to follow him. They'll actually, the Jews will be the first to follow him because they are waiting for their Messiah to come. They don't believe that Isa alayhi salam was it. And they don't want except Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. So they'll be the first to follow a Dajjal. They feel, they say he is the real Isa. As for the Christians, they believe in the coming of Isa alayhi salam. Because they've mixed up their scriptures, they will think that this is the man. And because he will say, I am Isa, they will ask for him, alayhi salam, they will ask for miracles and he will do these miracles. Some of them won't be convinced. See, afterwards he'll say that I am God. Non-Muslim people and the weak Muslims will follow him. The Dajjal will shake Iman to its core. And subhanallah, before he comes, three years will happen like this. In the first year, Allah Rabbul Izza will order the sky to hold back a third of its rain. So a third of the water of the rain will be held back. And the second year, two thirds will be held back. And the third year, there will be no rain. So a drought and famine has already gripped mankind. And then this man comes, the Dajjal, with him a river of fire and a river of water. And he enters into a village amidst the people. And he says, do you believe in me? I am your Lord. And when they believe, he tells the sky rain and rain comes. Tells the earth, produce your produce and it will produce its produce. He will go to a dead person, tell a person, a Bedouin, if I bring your parents back to life, would you believe that I am your Lord? He will say, yes, he says, rise. And two shayateen will come in the image of his parents and will say, son, listen to him, he's your Lord. Do you see Iman is shaken to its core? How do you not believe your eyes? He will tell the earth, spit out your treasures. The hadith says, like bees, gold and silver and diamonds will come out of the ground and follow him. It's difficult times. At this instance, only Iman will see you through. Listen carefully, Muslims. All the faculties and information gathering tools that you have will be deceived. The only thing that you will have left is your hearts. And it is important and I insist regularly work on the hearts. So in the time of the Dajjal, Iman will be shaken to its core. And he will go to another group of people, believe, they will say no. So he says, sky hold your water, earth hold your produce, and famine and drought and calamity will befall him. It is so easy just to say, khalas, okay, I believe, let's go, bring it on. That is why it is such a colossal test. And there will be one man who will be able to, who will do something. Rasul Sallallahu says, I know him and he is the best man in, on that day. He will come warning the people saying he is not God. He is not God. He is a Dajjal. He is the Antichrist. And they will say, what are you saying about our Lord? So they'll bring him to him. And he will say, I am your God. Look what I can do. He said, you are the liar. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi told us about you. So he'll bring a saw and he'll saw him in half. And then he'll walk between the two body parts and the man will come and rise. He'll become alive again. And the Prophet ﷺ told us he'll be able to do that once, just once. And the Dajjal says to him, now do you believe I am God? And he says, now I believe more that you are not God, but you are actually a Dajjal because you cannot do this to me again. And truly, he will not be able to do that again. He will throw him into his fire. And Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi tells us he will have something that looks like a fire and something that looks like water. He said it's an illusion. The fire is his water and his water is his fire. Go to the fire to drink from it if you see it. And the man vanishes, disappears. Rasul Sallallahu says, He is the best, he is a real man, the best of men in that day who tries to call the people away from the worship of a Dajjal. And he will stay and roam the earth for 40 days. The first day will be the length of a year. And look at the Ashab of the Rasul. When he said to them, A day like a year, their concern was, it wasn't, what time will I wake up and sleep? Do I sleep for six months, O oh Prophet? They said, what about salah, ya Prophet? How do we pray? If it's, do we pray five times in the whole year? Or, so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, اقدروا له قدره. Allocate times for it. Replicate the days. So the first day will be like a year. The second day like a month. The third day like a week. Fourth and onwards will be like ordinary days. He will traverse every city and every village except for two places. 
Makkah and Medina. Allah Rabbul Azza has protected those with angels. He will come towards Medina behind Uhud, behind Uhud, and he will climb the hilltop with his people. And he will say, do you see that white palace? That white palace of Ahmed and Subhanallah. You look at the pictures of the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from that far and that distance, it looks like a white palace. That is the palace of Ahmed. And he gets down to come towards it and the angel shoes him away. And he turns his face towards Bilad al-Sham. And understand, this is the time of the Mahdi. The Imam is here and the Dajjal has come. And I want to mention the, a story and I'll stick to the English for time reasons. This is the story of Tamim al-Dari. And I will give a general of whom instead of going into it in details. Tamim al-Dari was a Sahabi of the Prophet ﷺ. He was a Christian who became a Muslim. And he had an amazing experience. Tamim al-Dari came to the Rasul and narrated a story. Ya Rasul Allah, I was in a ship and the ocean started to become rough. And there's 30 other people with me. And the waves, you know, bashed us from pillar to post for a whole month. You know, it's tossing us between waves. And after a month, the waves subsided. And we reached near an island. And we anchored the ship and took a little boat and came to the island. And at the brink of the island, we saw a creature, the strangest we have seen, covered in hair to the extent that we couldn't tell its front from its behind. And they look at him, imagine the poor guys, you know, a month of, of seasickness. And now here, and they see this creature. So they said, woe be unto you, what are you? So he said, I am Jasasa. So they are hesitant and they say, we thought he's like a devil. So Jasasa said, there's a person in that monastery who is longing to see you, go to him. They said, when the beast told us about this man, a man, they said, we ran away from the beast immediately thinking it was a jinn or a shaitan or something and ran to this man, to this human being. We entered this hut that was set for worship and suddenly we saw in front of us a person, a man who was the biggest in build that we have yet to have seen. And he was so coarse in his body and in his features, strong and coarse, and big. His arms were wrapped to his neck with chains and his head and arms were also chained together to his knees, to his legs. And he's chained up really well, couldn't move. Legs and arms and to his neck. We said, what are you? And he said, you are able to hurt me because I'm chained up. So it's my right to ask who are you first so I can ensure my safety. They said, very well. We are people from the Arabs. We rode, we set sail in our ship and a storm hit us until we became lost and landed on this island. We came to this island and we found this beast that came to us that had so much hair on it. We asked it, who are you? And it said to us, I am the spire or the passer of news. And it led us to you. They said, we got afraid of this man and we, did, we didn't feel safe around him. However, the man said to us, tell me about the palm trees of Baisan. Baisan is a city in Jordan and he wanted to know whether there were palm trees planted in there a lot. We said, what do you exactly want to know about Baisan in Jordan? He said, I ask you, are there more palm trees and have they be filled with dates or not yet? They said, yes, it is full of palm trees and full of dates, more than many other places in, in, in what we know. He said, soon its palm trees and dates will become scarce. We no longer give fruits. Today, really, in Jordan, dates are scarce now. It used to be in history, abundance. Now listen, he said, now explain to me about Buhayr al-Tabariya. It's also close to Asham. They said, what do you want to know about it? He said, does it have water in it? He said, they said, yes, there's lots of water. He said, soon its water is going to go away. It's not going to exist anymore. And truly today, the water has gone drier than before. Then he asked them, he said, tell me about Zagar fountain. And Zagar fountain is uh, somewhere near Jerusalem, Beit al-Maqdis. Probably about three days journey if you wanted to walk away from Jerusalem, Beit al-Maqdis. That's where that fountain is. So basically in what we call Israel today. They said, what do you want to know about this fountain? He said, well, is there a large fountain happening and a great river from it? And do people plant a lot of vegetation around it and it gives a lot of water yet? They said, yes, it's got a lot of water and it's people plant a lot. 
So then he asks, tell me about the unlettered prophet and Nabiul Ummi. Tell me about Muhammad. Has he come and what is his situation? Yes, he has come. They said he has come out in Mecca and now he lives in Yathrib in Medina. He asked them, have his people fought him? They said, yes. He said, what did he do? They said he was driven out by his own people, but he went to another Arab who are the, the, the Yathrib people and those who embrace Islam with him and they uh, obeyed him. This man said to them, really, has that really happened? They said, yes. He said, أَمَا إِنَّ ذَاكَ خَيْرٌ لَهُمْ أَنْ يُطِيعُوا He said, behold, it is better for those people who obey him to keep on obeying him. He's actually supporting the Prophet Now I'm going to tell you about myself. As with regards to me, I am the Dajjal. Soon I will be given permission to come out of here. I will be released. And I will traverse the earth from its corner to its corner, not leaving a city or a village behind. And I will roam it for 40 days, a day like a year and so on and so forth. And I will go to every city except for Mecca and Tayyibah. So the Rasul at this time narrating the story hit his member like this. He goes, Tayyibah, Tayyibah, this is Tayyibah. Medina is Tayyibah. فهما محرمتان علي كلتاهما. He said they are both forbidden for me to enter. Now when we say he enters, it means he conquers, takes over, he owns it. كلما أردت أن أدخل واحد because every time I wanted to come into one of them, an angel will stand guard holding a, a sword and he will prevent me from entering Mecca and Medina. He said and now between the every two mountains that you can find a pathway entering into, into Mecca and Medina, there are groups of angels standing guarding it right now to the last hour. There are always angels from any, if you're going to enter Mecca or Medina through any pathway through, through mountains, two mountains, there will always be angels within there guarding it, but we cannot see them. But Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi advised us to go there if we can. And if we see him, go in the other direction. We can't fight him. And in another hadith, it describes how he'll, he will be released. Subhanallah, Ibn Umar annoyed a person who they used to consider at the time of the Ashab as he might be the Dajjal. So he says, he came and told the story to Hafsa. Hafsa is his sister and the wife of the Rasul. He says, I got him so angry that I saw him fuming like his body is about to explode. Like, you know, when you go red and you feel like you're expanding. So Hafsa said, woe be unto you, ya Ibn Umar. Don't you know that the Prophet said he will be released due to a moment of anger? As in the Dajjal will become angry somehow and he will rip the chains off Wallahu A'lam and then he will be released. So then he will roam the world until he comes and the Muslims are under the leadership of Imam Al-Mahdi and understand they don't have the capacity to overcome this challenge. So Muslims are constantly on the back foot until they are locked up and surrounded in one narration says Baytul Maqdis in one qawl at the base of Jabal Al-Tur and the Rajih is Baytul Maqdis. They are there and they are surrounded and the Dajjal and his army is outside and the siege lasts and as the Muslims are in the siege with the Dajjal and the fear is immense. Man will tie their wives and their mothers and sisters out of fear that they will run to the Dajjal and fall victim to it. Even in Medina al munawwara when he is camped outside Medina, three earthquakes will hit the city. Everyone will think, oh my God, and run out of the city. So the Prophet said, Allah will purify the city of its hypocrites and only the true believers will remain. So now the Dajjal after that comes to Baytul Maqdis and the Imam is there and the Muslims are there and they're trying to put up a resistance and at this juncture at this point when they are inside this encampment Allah Rabbul Izza sends them their solution and the solution of the Dajjal is Masih Isa alayhi salam so listen to and I will rush through this the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says Isa the son of Mary will descend how will he descend Ya Rasul? His hand will be on the wings of two angels. He will be covered in two garbs, both tinged slightly yellow. Beige, mahrudatayni, wadi'un kaffayhi ala ajnihati malakayni. Where Ya Rasul? Inda manarati bayda'a sharqiyya dimashq. Next to the white minarat at the eastern side of Damascus. And subhanallah, at the eastern door of Damascus, there is a white minaret. And there is the other one of the Umawi Mosque. 
both white minarets, they didn't exist at the time of the Rasul, but now it is there. So Isa will come down in that place. Then he will make his way towards Baytul Maqdis or Jabal al -Tur. And the Ahadith say, the Muslims at this stage are thinking what to do. So eventually they come to this consensus. Listen, we can't sit here forever. Let's get out and meet them face to face. So they make this decision at night that tomorrow we will open the doors and go and take this on head on. And Fajr comes, Fajr comes, Salat of Fajr. And the Adhan is given and the lines stand up and Iqama is given. And then Subhan al-Khaliq, the day or the area goes dark. The area and the hadith says so that a man cannot see his hand. It will go dark. And then when light comes back, they see in Isa is amidst them. And the Prophet says he will lower his head and you will see like moisture on it, as though his hair is wet, but it isn't wet. And when he lifts it, beads roll down his head like liquid, like pearls, and they scatter. And he comes to the Salat of Fajr and the Prophet says, what will be your situation when Isa, the son of Mary comes amidst you wa imamukum minkum, and your Imam is amidst you. The Imam is there, Isa alayhi salam. What will be your situation? So listen, the Iqama is given and he notices that Isa alayhi salam comes. So he says, Ta'ala, salli bina, come lead us in Salah. So in one qawl, the Prophet sallallahu says, Isa alayhi salam will put his hand between the shoulders of the Mahdi and say, Ba'dukum umara uba'd. This is the honor that Allah Rabbul Izzah has given this nation. You will lead each other. So remain in your position. So Isa comes down for a different purpose. And he prays behind the Mahdi. That's how important the Mahdi is. And the qawl of the Ahlul Ilm is, and in another narration he says, the Iqama was given for you. So lead the Salah. And then when the Salah is finished, and the people are ready. Do you understand? They were ready before Isa now for this challenge. That is why when you reach a level, Allah Rabbul Izzah will give you its solution. So he says, open the doors. So the doors open. And from afar, the Dajjal sees Isa alayhi salam. The false Messiah sees the real Messiah. And the Hadith says he starts to melt like salt and water. Dissolve like salt and water. And he runs and Isa alayhi salam chases him. And calling he says, it is written that I owe you one strike. I owe you one hit and that will come. So he catches him in the Babil Lud in Palestine. And in that place, in one narration with a lance and another one with a sword, Isa alayhi salam will strike and show the blood of the Dajjal in his sword. And the Hadith says, had he were not to strike, the man would have melted to death. He says to the people, can a God die? Here he is, I've killed him. Because if he melted and vanished, they'll think, oh, God went away. So he kills him to tell them that this is not God. And the Dajjal and the battle with the Dajjal will be finished. And the Muslims have gone through a colossal test. And Isa alayhi salam will come to them and rub their faces out of mercy and kindness and give them the bushara. This is your place in Jannah. This is your place in Jannah. And as this calamity of the Dajjal has just finished, Allah Rabbul Izzah will inspire Isa alayhi salam that, O oh Isa, another of my creatures is about to come out and no power on the face of this earth will withstand them and outstand them. <laughs>